Hi, I'm Donna Smith. I'm from the Queen Anne's County Soil Conservation Office, and I have the honor of celebrating and recognizing the 2017 Farm Family of the Year, which is Larry, Judy, Shoebrooks, and their family. And I'd like to say congratulations to them and welcome everybody. We appreciate you uh, giving us the time to talk to your family. And I want to say congratulations. And uh, the local Ag Advisory Board shows your family to be recognized at the fair this year for all of your hard work to act with agriculture and community service over the years. And we appreciate everything you've done. I'd like to say congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, a, it's an honor to do this um, every year, and I've known you all for many, many years. I know um, your family heritage and your farming operation and what stewards of the land that you are. And that is one of the key things that the local Ag Advisory Board looks at, is how you take care of your farm, how you're involved with the community, and your family traditions that you've had with agriculture. Okay, Larry, let's go back a few years and let's talk about um, some of your family history with agriculture. Um, have you, were you born and raised in Queen Anne's County? Or are you originally from here? Are your family originally from here? We were always in Queen Anne's County. Uh, my grandfather farm, both grandfathers, and uh, they had farms in Queen Anne's County. And then uh, my parents, they got married in uh, 28, and they started farming. Right. And uh, farm through the 30s, actually got burnt out in 1930 and, and house and then rebuilt. Uh, it was a rented farm mm -hmm. and so from that point, go ahead. So the, the family, did they lease the farm or do they own the farm? They You're, leased that farm. Okay. Or got burned out. Okay. He got burned out. Right. And uh, and then uh, they lived on a few different farms, a couple different farms. And then we, uh, I grew up on a leased farm and we actually moved I was about a senior when we moved on one of the far on a farm that uh, my father owned and my uncle. Right. And uh, we still own that farm today. Is that your home farm where you live now? No. Okay. That was my uncle's farm. Okay. And he passed away, and we bought it from my aunt somewhere in the late seventies. Right. The one we live on. The one we live on. Okay. Judy, how about your family? Um, are you originally from Queen Anne's County and did yes. your family farm at all? Yes, they, they all were farmers all okay. the time on. Right, and you were a, what was your maiden name? Leg. Okay, so you were from the Leg family and they were they were traditionally down there. Now, did you all milk cows? Did you have a grain operation? My or? father had, had cows mm -hmm. and, uh, and grain. Right. And it was he and his brother and uh, father right. together. So, go ahead there. We had cows until uh, 69. I, my father had cows. I actually uh, started uh, renting more ground. I took a couple little pieces before that. In 69, I bought my first tractor and rented my first two farms. Great. So how old were you, roughly, when you started farming on your own? The little pieces of ground. The little piece of ground, I was mm -hmm. 18, 19 in that range. Okay. So. I actually, I actually had a hog business since I was 15. Really? So. So what, what did you do with the hogs? Did you sell them locally or did you have them butchered or? I sold uh, feeder pigs to a guy in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then uh, fattened some out. In a couple of years, I fattened them out. And uh, and then I started selling at Denton Feeder Pig mm -hmm. sale. Right. And we had hogs until they were mine. And then and then in later years we had a partnership with my father, and we put all our hogs together because he had hogs and I had hogs. <laughs> and uh, we run about seventy sows in and fattened out and. 
still selling some feeder pigs, stuff right. like that. Right. So when did you get rid of the pig operation? About 32 years ago, 35 years ago. Well, we yeah, about 35 years ago. Okay. All right. So tell me how you all met. <laughs> Uh-oh, there must be a story there. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, I, I was down to Calhoun and just saw her. I knew if I had a friend that knew who she was, so that's how we met. I so you her. saw her and thought, hmm. We started dating. Yeah. Was it really that romantic to you? We broke up a few times. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other story, Tom, isn't it? <laughs> so, when you, what year did you get married? How long did you date before you 1972. got married? 1972. She answered that pretty quickly. You had to think about that, didn't yeah. you? Larry? No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> 44 years ago, I'll be 45 in August 26. <laughs> That's fantastic. So after you got married in 1972, how long was it before Mr. Jason came along? He got, he was born in uh, 76. November 1976. Okay, so we had... Um, the bicentennial baby. Okay, <laughs> all right. So um, Jason's your only child, correct? Yeah. Right. Okay, so um, growing up, let's go to Jason. Jason, how was it growing up on the farm? Have you, do your, what was your probably earliest memory of um, being raised on the farm? Um, I do remember the hogs, huh? pulling with them and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. riding the tractor, and always like you know being on the farm. Right. So, did you, as a young man, know that's kind of what you always wanted to do, or did you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Right. So, what were some of the responsibilities as a young man on the farm that you took care of? I mean, I helped in the field, cutting grass. We didn't have any animals when I got big enough to work. So. Mm -hmm. But always run equipment. And Isn't there no such thing as being old enough to work? Did you always <laughs> work on the farm as an animal? Well, yeah, but I guess I was, I guess I was four or five when I got rid of the, of the pigs. Right. Yeah. So when did you really kind of expand? When Jason, you got old enough to be. Um, on the farm and you decided you wanted to be on the farm full time. Um, I know you said that you had, Larry, you had a few smaller pieces and then when Jason kind of came into the fold and you were operating as a father-son family operation, when did you really start expanding? I think I took over a couple pieces when I was 17. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. wanna go a couple little pieces. Right. And then it was probably when I got out of school for where I got running some bigger farms. Right. So you have a grain operation, of course. Um, what other uh, have you? What other things have you expanded into? Well, me and Jessica started chickens. We we put up two chicken houses, and I guess we raised around sixty some thousand between and, the two of them, and that was in two thousand five. Okay. And then we just recently added two of the same size. Mm-hmm. So now you've Just got a, a roughly around 120,000. Yeah. Okay. And Jessica, mm -hmm. and you came into the family when? 95. 95. And can you tell us the story? I hope your story is a little more romantic than um, Judy and Larry's. <laughs> <laughs> we had never really knew each other that well. He went to school with my sisters and one day they were they were just trying to think of a nice guy for me to date and they thought of Jason so they had their friends call him and, and we've been together ever since. <laughs> so I was 15 and he was 18. Oh wow, mm -hmm. all right. And then of course Jason, you were just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always knew her dad and family so. Yeah, right, was, right. And they were in farming or they had been, been in the farming so. Right. It's always nice when someone you know, knows them. A little bit about the you know, business. Yeah, that's the nice thing about a small town area, and I mean, I think every farmer knows every farmer within mm -hmm. a 50 mile radius, pretty yeah. much. And Jessica, who were you before you were married and became a Shoebrooks? Cricket. You were My Cricket. My dad is Tommy. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're from the Churchill area. Yes. So when you uh, when you met in '95, and then when did you get married? '99. '99. And we have some very good-looking young people here with us today. And um, Jessica or Jason, would you mind introducing all the young people that we have here? 
We have Wyatt, um, he's the oldest, he's 11. And we have Sawyer, who is eight. And the twins are Willow and Summer, and they are four, almost five. Okay, Wyatt, tell us about how you help on the farm. You're getting old enough now that you sh you're uh, probably taking on some pretty good responsibilities as a young man on the farm. Tell us some of the stuff that you do on the farm. Well, I rip ground, I plant beans, I drive the grain cart, I work ground, I cut grass. Um, well, you're extremely busy. I'm going to some chickens. You help with the chickens. I help with chickens. Do you like working with chickens? <laughs> yeah, they're a little stinky, aren't they? <laughs> so, why? What else do you like to do when you're not um, in the chicken house or in the tractor? What's something that I I understand you have a hobby that you enjoy very much? What is that? Playing baseball. Yeah. And um, who? Do, what kind of baseball do you play? I mean, do you play a travel or school or mm, travel? Travel. Very good. It's Mr. Sawyer. I understand you just started couple of things on the farm this year. What were some of the things that you helped your dad with and your grandfather with? I drive the grain cart. Drive the grain cart? That's great. Um, do you like doing that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. So do you want to try maybe next year, maybe some ripping and that kind of stuff too? Yeah. Do you help in the chicken house? Uh, yeah. You pick up the chickens. Yeah, that's kind of nasty, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But you got to do it, right? You don't have any choice. <laughs> Okay, girls, do you help on the farm or do you just hang out with mommy most of the time? You hang out with mommy and you help her in the house and help her do stuff around here? I help her water the flowers. You do? You help her water the flowers? That's great. That's, that's been a little tough this year. It's been really hot and really dry, hasn't it? You probably had to do a lot of watering. Mm -hmm. How about you? Do you help mommy with the watering and the flowers? Yeah? That's good. That's awesome. Summer, can you tell us what you help mommy with on the on the farm? Do you used to help mommy with anything in the farm or the house? Do you go down to the chicken house or what do you do sometimes? Do you help mommy clean, fold, wash? Pick the garden. Pick the garden. What are some of the things you pick out of the garden? <laughs> Tomatoes. Yeah, tomatoes. <laughs> How about some squash? Do you like squash? No? You <laughs> like squash? Some squash is good. So you guys, when you get a little bigger, Summer Room Willow, maybe you'll have to ride in the tractor and drive the grain cart. When Sawyer gets older, he'll be ripping and Wyatt will be planting corn and all kinds of stuff. So you guys are going to have all kinds of jobs to do on the farm. Is that right? Yeah. Pop will be out of business. Yeah, they're going to put me out of business, I guess. <laughs> So Larry and Judy, what is it like for you? Now you had one son and you've got four grandchildren. What is that like for you looking at them and seeing how Wyatt and Sawyer are coming up on the farm and they're just starting to really kind of take on responsibilities? How is that? It's really great. Makes you proud. Proud, yeah. That's something that every family looks forward to is yeah. handing that responsibility over to their children and then to the grandchildren. Um, it's got to make you feel really good to know that they're interested right. and they want to carry on the tradition that your grandfathers and your fathers and now your son and grandchildren will continue to carry on. Yep, that's, that's our goal. Yeah. For them to do Ab that. Absolutely. Yeah. What has been one of the most difficult things over the years, do you think, that has been a challenge for you all farming? Prices. Market. Market's a difficult thing, and rent and land. Rent and land is is difficult too. But uh, if I had something that somebody else could do, it would be price crops because it's hard to sell crops, and you know you know you what your profit is. But it finally got there to it just in a week or so, but. Uh, it's still hard to know whether to pull the trigger or not on yeah. that. So that's the hardest thing is selling commodities. Right. Jason, what do you think? You're like in a different generation than your dad is. What do you yeah. think has been the most difficult challenge for you since you've been into the farming operation full time? I mean, I think it's, I think it's ground. I think it's, you know, it's 
between losing it for a while or losing it to, for the you know development, but that's kind of slowed it up. But, right. You know, it's just hard to, and it's hard to buy ground and you know make it make money with it. So it's yeah, kind of hard to expand right. like you would like to sometimes. So as a family, and you've been in this is you know you're looking at probably the fourth or fifth generation here with your grandchildren. Um, what would be something that you would tell people that don't farm that you would like them to understand about the difficulty of maintaining the family operation and being able to hand down the the operation to the grandchildren? What's been what's what do you want people to know? Uh, I want people to know that it looks easy on the outside, but it's it's tough tough business and if you got a lot of pride and keep your equipment up people think you got all new equipment and that's not the case you you it's tough to buy equipment nowadays because it's so expensive mm -hmm. so if people would realize what went into their food it would be a better world I think right so give us an example of the price of equipment just just a random I mean, just a base combine is probably around five hundred thousand. And how long do you have to pay for a five hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment? Usually five years. So five years. So if a family were to go out and purchase the house for five hundred thousand dollars, and the bank told them they had five years to pay for it, that would be quite a shock. <laughs> it would be quite. A so shock. and it's basically the same thing. And then yes. you're still the maintenance on it, still a big combine. Twenty sometimes in that third year, you're spending twenty grand on it. Maintenance. Right. If you run that random amount of acres to so justify it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's something that's really just, you know, hard to fathom that you go out and you buy one piece of equipment, one key piece of equipment that's five hundred thousand dollars and you have five years to pay for it. Mm -hmm. That's pretty daunting. And that's just the base combine. That's not the heads. That's not the heads. The heads are about a hundred thousand. I mean we're trading the big ones. Yeah, you were trading. Still, still a lot more. Right. Jessica? I know your family has farmed, but what do you see, you know, looking when you came into the Shoebrooks family, what is something that you've seen over the years with a family that's, you know, been, you know, a pride or a challenge for you? Um, well, I've, I've always valued, like, the responsibility that Jason's parents have just allowed him to have since a really young age, and me too. So I started running a tractor when I first met Jason, like, 16, and, um, just, um, I'm just very proud of them. Just, you know, their work ethic and their family values. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then it's just good to see our kids kind of following that path, you know. Right. Being brought up in a farm family is very special. I mean, I, I you know, I grew up on the farm and have a daughter that's grown up on the farm, and it, you know, the work ethic and the values and the pride that you take in your family is something that's just second to none when, you, when you're in an agricultural family. And um, again, I wanna say congratulations. You all set the prime example. You're good stewards of the land. You do wonderful conservation work on the, on the farm. Good water quality practices. Your poultry operation is absolutely spotless. I mean, it just sets the prime example of what we all achieve, try to achieve. And um, we in Queen Anne's County would like to congratulate you and say we're very proud that you are the 2017 Farm Family of the Year. Um, and we look forward to seeing you Wednesday night at the fair at 645 at the main show ring so we can congratulate you in front of your peers and public from Queen Anne's County. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you.